My name is Craig Birkinshaw, and my wife and I recently purchased a chocolate truffle. We are continuing to make the same great chocolates and truffles that have always been uh, at the Chocolate Truffle, but we bring 20 plus years of candy making experience and we're introducing so much more than what you could find here in the past. And we continue, want to continue to do that and just kind of be a full, uh, you know, a full service uh, confectioner in uh, Reading. I really wanted to get back to the art of candy making. It's really a lost art and it's uh, handed down from generation to generation. You really can't go to school for it anymore. We are making everything on site and uh, we, that's what our goal was to be able to build out a kitchen and be able to do everything on site so that I'm present all the time and um, I really want to get to know the customer base and it's great. I'm starting to recognize faces and names. We're making a full line of cream and butter fudges a full line of old-fashioned hard candies. Um, we're introducing new chocolate pieces as well. We've introduced a new Swiss fudge this week, as well as a coconut needum. We do a lot of gift baskets and uh, chocolates and truffles. We have a special frostbite truffle that we have at this time of year. So it's a peppermint uh, truffle with a uh, sprinkling of candy, crushed candy cane. Um, we're also making a, um, some people call it a holiday bark or a peppermint bark. And it's a dark chocolate with uh, a white chocolate top a little bit of um, peppermint, pure peppermint oil, and then we also sprinkle crushed candy cane on that. Uh, that's uh, very, very popular and it's done very well for us uh, at the start of this uh, Christmas season. We have the retail store, obviously, and then we also have our online website, um, which we're currently working on to add the new products that we're making available in the store to also have them available online. We actually encourage it if somebody calls in and places their order, especially at this time of year. And we can have it already, and then when you come to pick it up, you're just picking it up as opposed to maybe having to wait in line to get something. So, and we also do uh, corporate gifting. So, if uh, there's a company that wants to, you know, send um, something nice out for the holidays to their clients, we can also accommodate them as well. And we do do a lot of gift baskets and um, you know, stackable gift boxes. We're on Facebook and um, we do update it regularly. In fact, I usually, if I'm making a batch of something that's new, I'll take a photo of it and I'll, I'll upload it and then uh, and, you know, I'll tell people what it is and when it's available. And um, you know, so it's a, it's a nice way to introduce the new pieces that we're introducing. Um, and get the word spread out there and uh, it's also a great way for us to when we're having events like our holiday open house that we had um, last week um, you know people can see that there and uh, you know we'll constantly put if we're having any specials or if something new comes in um, and we also if there are a lot of we have a large following for Vermont not free so a lot of people with allergies we will usually post on Facebook that we have uh, that our you know Vermont not free has come in uh, because it does go quickly so so it's a great way for us to get the word out on, on new products and on uh, events that we might be having. We're making uh, our own candy canes. We have a peppermint and spearmint, and we're making them on site. Candy canes made the way they were made 100 years ago. So the way that we start out with that is um, it's really simple ingredients. It's uh, water, sugar, and uh, cream of tartar. And what we do is we weigh that up, and we put it in a copper kettle and we put it on our stove and let it cook for approximately 10 to 15 minutes uh, until it reaches its uh, perfect temperature. And once we do that, we remove it from the stove and we pour it on our marble table, which allows the syrup to cool and also gives us the opportunity to flavor it and also put in the color for the red stripe, uh, if it's a peppermint or green, if it's a spearmint. At this point, we're separating the stripe from the main part of the candy. So we use a marble table to cool down. Um, that's actually, today there are, there are other tables available to candy makers, um, water jacketed steel tables that um, you can have hot or cold water run under and it will cool the plate to cool things faster. But prior to that technology, if you went into any candy store that made candy back a hundred years ago, they would all have a marble table very similar to this. The goal is to get it to a workable consistency so that we can take this part here and we're gonna pull it on an old-fashioned candy hook. Um, once it has cooled enough on the, uh, on the table, we'll remove the stripe and put it in front of the batch warmer, which keeps it um, pliable for us so that when the other half is ready, we can combine them to make the candy cane. 
then we take the main part of the batch and we bring it to an old-fashioned candy hook which is how it's been done for over a hundred years and the hook itself is probably close to that age mm -hmm. as you look at it right now it's, it's very clear kind of a yellowy color and just the simple action of pulling this on the hook you're adding or infusing air into the batch and by doing that we'll actually turn this white and it's very fluffy and it makes for a nice uh, a nice soft candy cane as opposed to something very very hard that sticks to your teeth uh, once we remove it from the hook we bring it back to the table just to form it into a loaf that's uh, workable for the candy cane we bring it back to the bench warmer we cut the stripes out, we put one large stripe on one side and three small stripes on the other side to make a traditional candy cane. And then we just kind of roll, slowly roll the batch until we get the right thickness, approximately between the size of the thickness of a dime, a dime or, a, or a nickel. And once we roll that out, we cut it into one foot lengths and then we curl them by hand. And that's how we're selling them in the store. And they're wrapped up in a nice uh, cello bag with a, uh, with a nice satin ribbon. Um, we also will do, uh, we can do lettering where we can kind of take the pieces and roll it out and then shape letters. Um, and sometimes we'll do that for somebody who wants initials or, you know, want, wants a word spelled out or something. We can, uh, we can, you know, accommodate that. So even though we try to make them as uniform as possible, they are handmade and they are all unique. So it's, uh, it's a great gift and a lot of people really enjoy them. So uh, it's a great thing to come in at this time of year to get in the store.